Greetings fellow Dungeon Delvers and welcome to Dorans and Dragons, where we work together to come up with Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition builds for your favorite League of Legends champions. Today we're building Jin, the Virtuoso. This champ was my first level 7 mastery and he is near and dear to my heart, so I'm happy we finally got to build him. Kata Jin was a mere stagehand who worked with one of Ionia's traveling theaters and opera houses. The Kinku tracked him throughout Ionia after a string of bizarre murders took place all of the victims being placed in horrifying displays of art. Jin is first and foremost a perfectionist. He cannot be good, he must be perfection. And he believes his art and talent justify all of the horrors he inflicts upon his victims. Before we get started with the build, go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button so you're always notified when we release our builds. We'd like to thank one of this month's Dorn's Blade patrons, Nonary Nathan. Nathan chose Jin to build as part of the rewards for our Blade tier patrons. Speaking of, we're releasing our first homebrew, Denizens of the Void, to our Blade patrons in August. Come join us if you're interested in getting monthly homebrew releases, as well as a bunch of other great rewards. Alright, now let's get into it. First, let's cover the goals of this build. Jin is an artist. His victims are the canvas, and his weapons are his paintbrush. We need to add a bit of flourish to everything we do. Speaking of weapons, Jin uses several guns, so we'll need to get them working. Finally, Jin sometimes needs to work from afar. We need to give him some long range utility. For race, try to contain your surprise, but we're going to go with Varian Human. This isn't nearly as feet heavy as our past few builds, but the free one is going to help bring Jin's gunplay online early. We get 1 point in 2 abilities. We'll take a plus 1 in Dexterity and Wisdom. This will help our ranged weapon attack rolls and boost a class feature we get later on. For our skill proficiency, we'll pick up Deception. Jin was on a murder spree for a long time before he was caught. The main draw for this race is the free feat. We're going to reach into the unearthed arcana for the gunner feat. This is going to bump our decks by one and give us proficiency with firearms. Most importantly though, it removes the 5 feet disadvantage range from up close range combat. For background, we're going to go with entertainer. In a sick, fascinating way, Jin seeks to entertain and create art wherever he goes. We get skill proficiencies in acrobatics and performance, and the buy popular demand feature. You can always find a place to perform, although I'm betting the people aren't expecting the form your art takes on. If you can manage not to murder them though, you can receive free lodging and food as long as you perform. You know what time it is. Standard array time. Roll if you want, but wait, that's it. No multi-classing? <gasps> it can't be so. Yep, we're solo classing it up, but we still have some relatively high stat demands, so pay attention. Dexterity is first. Jin attacks with ranged weapons and his stat boosts both our attack and damage rolls. Next we'll take Wisdom. This is going to help us with a class feature later on. Charisma is going to be after that. Jin has a powerful personality. Intelligence will be our 12 score. Jin eluded capture for a very, very long time, always staying ahead of those who were trying to bring him in. Our constitution is after that. Jin is a marksman and as such is very squishy. And finally we'll dump our strength. Jin is a pretty thin and nimbly guy, so we're good there. Our equipment needs are going to be mainly crafted from the Gunslinger's Firearms Table. We need a pistol for Whisper, the Bad News Sniper for our Curtain Call, and the Hand Mortar for our Q, Dancing Grenade. Alrighty, let's start this build with a level in Fighter. Fighters have a D10 hit die and proficiency with all armor and shields, as well as simple and martial weapons. You also get to choose two skill proficiencies. We'll take Athletics and Intimidation. Level 1 fighters choose a fighting style. Archery gives a plus 2 to attack rolls made with ranged weapons. The last level 1 feature is Second Wind. This lets you use a bonus action to heal back 1d10 plus your fighter level. This recharges on a short rest, so make sure you use it before you start spending your hit die. Second level fighters gain only one feature, but it's quite possibly the best in the game, Action Surge. This gives you the ability once per rest to have two actions on your turn, which will give us the ability to cast our ultimate in one turn later on. Level 3 fighters choose their martial archetype to focus their skills on. We're going to go with Gunslinger. This gives us a bunch of features up front. First we get Firearm Proficiency, though it's a little redundant at this point. We also get the Gunsmith feature. This walks you through the properties of the firearms you can craft. The Reload property indicates how many shots can be fired until you have to spend an attack or action to reload your weapon. Misfire is a property you have to be wary of. If you roll this number or lower, your firearm needs to be repaired before you can fire it again. The explosive property will help us with the balance of Jin's dancing grenade. 
Everything within 5 feet of the target has to make a deck save or take 1d8 fire damage. Adept Marksman gives us Trick Shots and Grit. Grit is a pool of points equal to your Wisdom mod that lets you activate your Trick Shots. Trick Shots are like Battlemaster maneuvers for your shots. We get two options at this level and gain more as we level up. Violent Shot is first, this is going to provide the extra damage from our fourth shot. You can spend one or more Grit Points and add an extra damage die for each Grit Point spent. We'll grab our W, Deadly Flourish, with Winging Shot. This lets you spend one Grit Point to force a Strength save, that if the target fails, it knocks prone. Fourth level fighters get their first ability score improvement of many. Instead of an ASI, we're going to take a feat. Sharpshooter gives a bunch of awesome features to our guns. We get max range on our weapons without disadvantage, your shots ignore half and three quarters cover, and the big one is you can call your shots by taking a minus five to the hit roll and adding 10 flat damage to the attack. Level five fighters gain the extra attack feature. This lets you fire two shots per attack action rather than one. Or you can use the big news and reload it and have it ready for the next round of combat. Sixth level fighters get another ability score increase. We still have two feats to go, so we'll grab one here. We're going to grab the Piercer feat from the Unearthed Arcana as well. This increases your dexterity by one and lets you reroll one damage die that deals piercing damage. The last thing is when you deal a critical hit, which later will get double the chance to do, you get to roll an additional damage die. This feels just like the extra damage from Jin's passive, Whisper. Level 7 Gunslingers get the Quick Draw feature, which adds your proficiency bonus to your initiative and lets you get quicker with drawing and stowing your firearms quickly during combat. You also get another Trick Shot. We're going to pick up Deadeye Shot, which lets you spend a grit point to gain advantage on an attack roll. This will make hitting sharpshooter shots even easier since advantage is mathematically considered a plus 5 to the roll, thus negating the sharpshooter penalty. 8th level fighters get another ability score increase, so we're going to pick up our final feat. We need to get traps for Jin's E, Captive Audience. To do that, we're going to take Magic Initiate for Druids. We get two cantrips and a level 1 spell. Produce Flame is a cantrip that'll give us some pyrotechnics for our wonderful displays of art. You can conjure a flame into your hand. It remains for the duration, or you can yeet it for 1d8 fire damage, scaling with character level. Snare is a level 1 spell that's going to be how we get the E ability. You create a circle with 5 foot radius on the ground. It disappears and becomes a magical trap. If a small, medium, or large creature steps into its radius, it needs to succeed on a deck save or be yoinked into the air. They can keep trying to make the save on each of their turns. Level 9 fighters gain Indomitable. This lets you reroll any saving throw you fail once per long rest. You do have to use the new roll, however, so if you fail twice, you're still in trouble. 10th level Gunslingers get the Rapid Repair ability. This lets you spend a grip point to repair your misfired gun as a bonus action rather than a full action. Level 11 fighters gain an improvement to extra attack. They can now attack three times instead of two, thus allowing even more carnage. We almost have a full revolution of the pistol. 12th level fighters gain another ability score improvement. We're actually going to bump some scores finally with two points in our dexterity for some damage and accuracy. Level 13 fighters gain a second charge and indomitable. Remember this is the reroll your failed saves once per long rest ability. 14th level fighters gain another ability score improvement. There's still two more to go. Have some patience with me. We're going to bump our wisdom now by two to get our grip points up. Level 15 fighters gain the lightning reload ability. This is nice because it lets you reload as a bonus action rather than burning an action or one of your attacks. 16th level fighters get the penultimate ability score improvement for the build. Two more points in wisdom please for another grit point. Level 17 fighters gain a doozy here. Two action surges per long rest. Unfortunately, you can't use it on the same turn, but in a few levels, you'll be able to ult on back-to-back -back turns. It's going to be awesome. You also get a third usage of Indomitable. 18th level Gunslingers get two awesome abilities here. Vicious Intent doubles our critical strike range, letting us get critical hits on a 19 or 20 on the d20 for your attack rolls. Remember, this also increases your range to build grit points. Hemorrhaging Critical synergizes this by making the target take half the damage from the attack at the end of their next turn. Remember to include the Sharpshooter damage and Piercer damage in this calculation. Level 19 fighters get the last ability score improvement for the build. Thank God. We're going to max out our Wisdom with a point and round off our Charisma as well. You know how I hate having those odd modifiers. 
20th level fighters gain the final extra attack improvement. You can now attack four times. Time to turn on the curtain call with our sniper rifle, Bad News. It deals 2d12 piercing per attack, and you have to reload it after every shot. This means we can attack and reload twice, then action surge and do it again. That's four shots. If we apply sharpshooter to all and add deadly shot to the last one for the fourth shot, that's 9d12 plus 60 piercing damage. That's an average of 119 damage, not including criticals and not including additional grip points if you want to add them to your deadly shot. This build ends up dealing a truck ton of damage. It's easily one of the strongest builds we've done so far. Alright, now that we've completed the build, let's see how we did. First the good. Damage, damage, damage. There's a ton of damage ready to be dealt in this kit. We also have a ton of flavor potential in the performance aspect. Remember, that comes out the most in good roleplay. Finally, our range is insane. Our bad news rifle has a range of 800 feet. You can kill someone from over a block away and skedaddle before anyone even knows you were there. Now the bad. Though we have a bunch of levels in Fighter, which has a relatively large hit die, our AC is only 15 and our HP is only 120, so we're still pretty squishy. We don't really have much utility here either. There's a few crowd control features, but they're not the best. And lastly, we don't have any magic, other than the bit from our Druidic Magic Initiate feat. So, what'd you think? I've included a link to this build via D&D Beyond in the description below, as well as Amazon links to the books used in this build. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. We have a few awesome rewards including access to our Discord community and a guaranteed champion build. Plus, this month we're starting our homebrew. We plan on turning out one league champion build every week. Thanks for watching and hopefully we'll catch you on the Rift, or in the Forgotten Realms.